Hello once again, good morning, and welcome to Living in the 21st Century. Joining me today is Barbados Council General from Massachusetts, that's Tim Downs. Also joining me is Barbados Council General from New York, Mackie Holder. And we have in the house, no stranger, her name is Maureen Prescott. She is the president for UBIN, that's United Barbadians in Massachusetts. Gentlemen and lady, thank you for joining me today on Living in the 21st Century. My first question goes out to you, Tim Downs. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how best we do serve Barbadians here in Massachusetts, as well as Barbados. Yeah, uh, good morning. First, first of all, uh, a slight correction. I'm, I'm not the Council General for Massachusetts. I'm the, the Honorary Council uh, for Massachusetts, which means that the Council General uh, Honorable Matthew Holder is, um, I work under him. Uh, how do I serve Barbadians here? Uh, it's been my passion for many years um, here in Boston since I've been here to um, to try to reach out to Barbadians from every, you know, throughout the, the Commonwealth, throughout the, this particular hemisphere, atmosphere here, hemisphere. So I've always been part of uh, groups that um, reach out to uh, the community here. Right now, um, we, as, a, as the uh, Grand Master of Prince Hall, we are also reaching out to Barbadians here um, as far as the COVID uh, vaccine is concerned. So in, in a lot of ways, we reach out to the community for their needs. And also, uh, even before I was a council general, uh, honorary council, I served them with uh, assisting in passport forms, the various things that are needed from Barbados here. Um, and in Barbados, uh, you know, it's just, I'm always there. Um, and, um, in terms of assisting Barbados there in, in Barbados, if there are any, if, if there are any disasters or, or hurricanes or or things like that. I've always uh, been the one to try to gather goods or anything like that to, to help serve uh, those people who were, um, you know, yes. uh, hurt by the hurricanes or anything like that. So I've always, I've always been on both ends trying to assist my obedience. Great. And C.G. Holder, um, you, you were in this political atmosphere for a long time, um, for many, many years. You, serve, you come from the same parish I came from in Barbados. Um, yeah, so tell me um, a little bit about yourself servicing Barbados here in New York, as well as keeping things going fine at home. Um, is there any strategic plans you have to maintain that excellence? Um, first thing, let me say thanks for having me on your show, Errol. It's a, it's a pleasure. And um, the next thing I will say is that uh, there, there's nothing political about this at all. Uh, once we come from Barbados and um, we are appointed to positions like this, it is all about, it is all about Barbados yes. um, and, and not about politics at all. Um, so we're, we're here to serve all Barbadians in the 11 states on the Eastern Seaboard uh, that we represent in, in whichever way. And this, this takes a number of um, forms. Uh, we do things like the, the, what we call the consular work, which is passports, uh, repatriations of Barbadians who want to go back to Barbados to live, uh, those kind of things, um, citizenship and, and, and that sort of thing. But um, the, the, the plan really overall is to form deeper alliances with Barbadians wherever they may be um, in the areas that we represent and also to change the orientation slightly more into a, a business direction um, where we can seek to attract investments to Barbados but also uh, seek exposure for Barbadian products whether that be pepper sauce or something like that or whether it be cultural products. And the cultural products are 
present opportunities for Barbados. As you know, Barbadians are very talented. Uh, as as we as we speak now, we have probably the most successful uh, person in the whole entertainment cultural spectrum, which will be Rihanna. And and ac across that spectrum, there there are wide opportunities to export Barbadian talents. Um, so that that is our plan, and we execute it by first uh, forming stronger ties, and I think we've been able to do that in the last few years with the various Barbadian associations, including UBIM in, in Massachusetts, which is an umbrella body. We've been able to kickstart some new organizations. As you know, many of these are tied to institutions, which would be mainly schools. And we've also been able to form some alliances uh, in the wider community and with government agencies and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a building process and we feel that the, the more we can publicize Barbados in ways, in all kinds of ways, including what we're doing today, and we can get people to understand the, the various programs and what is available in Barbados, um, all of that helps, of course, uh, to develop the island. Of course, we want our own people to invest in Barbados. And a number of them have done that. Uh, one thing I can safely say is that Barbadians who live overseas are very invested in the success of their country. They have been and they continue to do so. The last year has been one that has been extremely challenging in all respects. But the Barbadian community has really stepped up and contributed whether it was in the provision of tablets to the prime minister's charity or, or just helping generally. Yes. Great. So, yeah, so uh, this is for this question is for the president of UBIM, which is United Barbadians in Massachusetts. Um, Maureen, I know you for quite a while now, and I know for a fact that you are a driving force between activities here in Massachusetts and keeping close connections to Barbadians in Barbados. What is your strategic plans going down through this year into next year uh, for active promotional activities, keeping Barbados up and going? What's your plans for this time around? Thank you, Aaron, for that question. I, I haven't met with the committee uh, we've just had elections just a week ago, so we haven't really met to formalize a plan for activities. However, since that we're in the period of COVID, it changes uh, the couple of things that we were going to do because for UBIM, we've had uh, activities just to raise funds to host the Barbados Independence. And there were like three activities uh, during the course of the year, and those activities involved a lot of uh, community work, community contact. So given that, we certainly want to maintain um, a visible force within our community. So we're going to be making a, a shift and use using the uh, social media and all the visuals that we can use to connect with our people uh, to, to share what we're doing because uh, this COVID-19 certainly has changed our outlook Yes. Um, we certainly can do some wonderful things. There are some um, organizations here in Massachusetts that have continued to um, be very relevant. And so UBIM needs to step up a little bit and we need to show a little bit more community work. And this gives us the time to make the adjustments to our uh, bylaws and constitution, giving us a little bit more flexibility that we can actually become a little bit more engaged within the community. So we're hoping to continue to do that within these next few years while we've got uh, some time to think about what we can do to really reach our people. Excellent. Because I just was about to ask uh, CJ Matthew Holder uh, pertaining to this, this line of conversation we just had. Um, the coronavirus had dealt an economic blow basically to Barbados. And we know for a fact that tourism is one of our major um, foreign income earners to the, to the country. And not only Barbados, but other Caribbean territories would have suffered the same economic blow. With the pandemic still taking its toll at this point, is there any strategic plans that we're going to put in place going forward in the future, either to make it for what for a lost time or to even look at life from a different standpoint 
in making its economy stronger. Uh, do you have any ideas at this point what the Prime Minister May Martley may be thinking in terms of keeping the economy as active as possible? Um, I think first I'd say all countries um, share somewhat the same yes. challenges um, to going forward as a result of the pandemic. Before COVID-19, uh, Barbados had embarked on a process after a few years of economic decline of restructuring and resetting the economy. Um, yes, based um, ar around tourism still as our driver, but moving into other areas, digitization to, to increase and improve efficiency, ease of doing business, investing in, in the what we call the culture, the cultural industries, and other areas involving uh, young people, and um, looking also at, at other areas that uh, we would not have paid as much attention to as we should have previously, including um, agriculture, not in the way obviously that would have been done before but to look at the the, the, the sort of marketplace and see where we can find um, niche niche areas that we can be either dominate or be one uh, second or third in so so there was a pivoting going on and it involved a, a lot of training and so on. in the period of covid obviously we've been severely impacted because of our tourism, tourism is, is, is our main driver. And as much as we can speak and talk and throw up ideas, that is not gonna change anytime soon. The, the, the truth is that um, even New York, if you look at New York, uh, New York is, is pretty much based on the same things as Barbados. New York is predominantly a tourist destination. It is also the financial center of, of um, America, Barbados, the same. Barbados's income is from tourism and, and uh, in a wider scale, what we call financial services. So both th those have been impacted. We have used the, 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 the pause, as we call it, to retrain our tourism people to increase professional skills. Um, there, there is, there, there is ongoing work um, looking at how we pivot in other areas. And, and this pivoting means that how we strengthen some areas um, and look at areas that might not be as necessary in this kind of world and, and going forward. It's a, it's a diff difficult balancing act though. So I'm not, I, I don't want to underestimate the challenge. Um, it is hard for a small economy to change far less a big economy um, when faced with something like, like the pandemic. Um, changing an economy takes time. Um, there's a long-term a long -term plan, as we said, to go more in the route of cultural services, services period, and um, into other areas of agriculture, equipping our young people to be a lot more integrated into what is a technical world, a tech-savvy world. This question goes out again to Tim Downs. Uh, I want to ask you this also as an academic scholar. Barbados can be deemed as one of the most academic, intellectual nations amongst the Caribbean region. Do you think at this time that at least Barbados can use their education as a platform to be the academic center for the Caribbean, where we have our own state university training Caribbean residents, even our own state hospital training doctors, even if we have to import a few good doctors from Cuba or someplace to train other doctors. Could we step into a next run, step up the box, go outside the box and look at our greatest resource, our academic excellence, and start to use that as an industry that can further build economic strength for, for Barbados. Also, you see a place like Dubai, and Dubai took up 
square miles of the ocean and build several other small nations, almost the size of Barbados. Now, I'm not saying Barbados is to go that far, but would it be a good idea if we can think about taking up a part of the ocean? And I'm saying this mildly because even though Dubai done that, all the um, houses, the commercial buildings, and whatever they built were sold actually before the projects came into tuition. And I say that because I think for real estate can play a potent role in economic development for Barbados, but we got to think good marketing and healthy strategies, even if it means we have to do what we just said in terms of taking a part of the ocean and building commercial buildings and houses and so forth, that tourists can come here actually and buy a piece of Barbados because we are so small, there's limited um, land to sell to people who want to go there and live. So, I mean, th these are things I'm thinking about. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to happen overnight, but I'm saying if you're going to borrow money from the IMF and the World Bank to no 10, five years, no, five, 10 years down the road, it's still difficult to pay back. Why can't we take on big projects, even if we've got to do tolls in Barbados that cars can just put in their 50 cents when they travel. This also can build like revenue for Barbados. Do you think Barbados should also have an economic makeover? Um, I know that's a big mouthful, um, CG 10 downs, yeah. but uh, I don't know if you can capture on a part of it. So, so to answer the question about uh, Barbados being uh, an educational center where we have uh, the uh, uh, University of maybe Westernese or of, of Barbados University. That is um, th th that is absolutely correct. We have the we have the, the, the smarts. We have we have uh, the educational level. So yes, we can do that. And what it all what it also will do, it will attract foreign students from. United States, England, Canada, and so on. So we have to, we have to, we have to make it so that it's attractive to the foreign students. Um, uh, as far as um, building out out in the ocean, uh, we know that Dubai does have the capital. So it it depends on the capital that you have, um, and that's where uh, uh, an organization like Invest Barbados comes in because it, it needs to be marketed properly so that Barbadians throughout the world, around, along with other people, can invest and start a project like that. But that, that takes a lot of capital. Um, so these things are possible. We should think outside the box, I, I believe. But let me, let me just say one thing before. Um, the, the, the CG had asked me um, back last year uh, about organizing an educational summit. And he also just mentioned uh, this award uh, and the robotics um, um, uh, program that he does every summer at the uh, University of the West Indies in Barbados. And I, I'm proud to say that those are, that's one of the programs that I've supported uh, for the last several years, whether it was the uh, uh, Assistant Director at Sea Grant, and I'm also um, so. Just yesterday, I signed an I signed an agreement with the Boston Public Schools um, to do an school program um, here in in Boston, and I'm connecting the summit, the Education Summit that that, that um, the CG asked me to uh, to work on. I'm going to connect that because. The, uh, the, the the Boston Public Schools and Prince Hall, uh, we're going to be take, we, we're going to be creating a, a curriculum on demand. Prince Hall, who is from Barbados, and so I want to see if I can connect that also to the summit because I believe we're going to go back to that summit, uh, an educational summit in Boston. We did have a meeting with uh, Maureen and. And, and, and the group uh, just before the pandemic. So all these things, yes, they're, they're possible. We want to work on all these things as well. Um, definitely the university in Barbados 
is a bright idea. Um, it's gonna it's, it's gonna attract um, foreign students, and that's gonna be good for the economy. And also, the building out in the ocean, uh, it's gonna take a certain amount of capital, but if invest by this for the market it properly, I believe yes. it'll be successful. So, I, I really, if I may come in here, sure, of course. Um, so let me just start by the university. In the last, uh, let, let's say, uh, 20 years or so, um, starting under um, departed Prime Minister Owen Arthur, himself a graduate of the, of the UE, um, invested a large amount of money into the building out of the, the Cave Hill campus of the University of the West Indies. Um, in, in, in a number of directions, all of which aid the developmental process of, of Barbados, including um, building out uh, cricket, cricket academy and, and areas like that, research areas and so on. And, and, and his, his, his vision was to make the university while allowing for easy access government funded access to nationals um building it out so that it becomes a, a commercial university as well attracting um foreign students and, and that has been the case uh it is still a work in process uh pro progress uh very much so but that is also a, a plan um, the university is now obviously has been impacted by COVID as well, but the university has on the, on the cars, uh, things like a medical center, um, medical research that it can sell, um, and, and those, and some other, and a number of other partnerships uh, where it can become a, a, a sort of semi-commercial entity. Um, the robotics program I just spoke about, that is centered in, in Barbados, but that also involves other Car um, Caribbean countries as well. And we're talking about very young kids. Um, I, I believe they're all under the age of, of 16. Um, so that is the sort of thing that is going on there. In, in terms of the building out of offshore, there has been a proposal on the cars for, I think maybe more than 10 years now um, to do that. But what I will say is that um, a small country like Barbados, we have to be very careful about how we manage our resources and, and that we do not create a country that while it is economically viable, is not socially manageable. Okay. Um, and I will say also that investment, capital investments through real estate has been a feature of the development of Barbados for the longest while, whether in, in hotels or actually in, pri in private villas, there are quite a number of multi-billionaires who make Barbados their home. And um, this has helped Barbados because they, apart from the substantial investments that they bring in terms of the actual buildings, they contribute a lot to the development, the social enhancement of Barbados. These go from people like Andrew Lloyd Webber, and 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 uh, I mean Bill Gates has been there, so has been Warren Buffett, um, and, and and that sort of thing. But there has also been a plan. I, I spoke about plans before, in I believe twenty nineteen, the Prime Minister outlined a, a, a vision for Barbados. Some part of that vision is to build out the capacity. For instance, between the Hilton, um, and this is on the, the, the southwest coast, going going all the way down to the the start of the west coast on Brandon's, and there are there were a number of persons who had already demonstrated interest in building a whole mix of of things, including hotels, uh, residential complexes, um, entertainment centers, and and the like. Uh, there was also uh, a proposal to uh, have a, a, a purpose-built marina and so on. Now, obviously, with the impact that the pandemic has had on finances, some of these things are changing. But those are all intended to be to be private sector-driven 
projects and um, the government is, is behind those. Uh, and I expect that in the coming months, uh, once we get past the vaccination stage and we can get herd immunity going, that um, a number of those projects will come back on on stream. So Barbados is looking forward. All that to say Barbados look, is looking forward, but we have to be careful. I, I'm not so sure myself um, how the building out of, of islands will translate, um, but it has been, it, it, a proposal has been made. And um, if you look, if you ever get a chance, you can look through um, business Barbados and, and so on. You would actually see the, the drawings and so on. Um, in fact, I should, I should tell you that the chair of the UWI committee, um, Sir Paul Altman, is the person who is a known real estate developer in Barbados, is the, the person who put forward the idea and who has been putting it up there um, as recently, I believe, as a month ago when they had a discussion on the future of tourism. So the, the big ideas are the, the big ideas are there. I, I think Barbados is known for big ideas. Barbados has been ahead in a number of areas, um, whether elevating females or conceptualizing edu an, uh, an education-based society saying that our only resource really is our people, and we understand the investment in our people in, in terms of education. But we have to be mindful of how we manage our resources and that we are not investing in areas to, in which we cannot reason